Reptiles are one of Earth's most diverse groups of life, with over 12,000 living species. They have also been around for a very long time, first appearing 312 million years ago during the late Carboniferous period. And for the better part of their long existence, members of this group have dominated the Earth. This reign of supremacy first began with the Pseudosuchians that originated during the early Triassic period, and was quickly followed up by the most iconic group of reptiles ever, the dinosaurs, who were the king of the world for a staggering 165 million years. However, no reign can last forever, and 66 million years ago, the non-avian dinosaurs swiftly went extinct. And with their downfall, the era of reptiles ended, and thus the age of mammals began. However, this isn't exactly correct, as there was another group of reptiles that although were less famous than the dinosaurs or the Pseudosuchians, did in many ways become the dominant force that took over following the demise of the dinosaurs. And these were the Sebecidae. This was a family of prehistoric terrestrial crocodilomorphs that belonged to the Sebecosuchians and were highly diverse and widespread, with a heavy concentration in South America and Europe. They were extremely successful hunters and became the largest terrestrial carnivores since the Mesozoic megatheropods. However, despite the success, they actually had a very humble beginning, as seen with their very first known member, the Ogresuchus. For a long time, it was thought that all members existed during the Cenozoic, but after dating the Ogresuchus, it was discovered that it actually had lived during the domain of the dinosaurs, being specifically dated to 67.7 million years ago. Its fossils were unearthed in the Tremp Formation of Spain, and were extremely small in size compared to its later relatives, with adults only reaching 1 meter or 3.6 feet in length, while weighing 9 kilos or 20 pounds, making it similar in size to a large monitor lizard. Its smaller state was possibly a result of the high presence of carnivorous dinosaurs in its habitat, which included eight different species, one of which was the Pyroraptor a highly specialized dromaeosaur which, like the Ogresuchus, was on the smaller side, leading to a potential competition between the two animals. Along with theropods, there were also multiple hadrosaurs, sauropods, ankylosaurs, and iguanodonts in its environment, some of which may have actually been a part of the Ogresuchus' diet, albeit as infants or eggs. This is speculated as the Ogresuchus was a fully land-based predator that had relatively powerful jaws easily capable of cracking eggs or tearing flesh. Additionally, it was surprisingly fast thanks to its upright long legs and reduced armor that lightened its weight and granted it more speed, allowing it to outrun slower juvenile dinosaurs. Yet, for the most part, these dinosaurs would have grown too large too fast to be preyed upon by this early Sebekid, thus leading to the idea that non-dinosaurs were likely its favorite prey, which included small mammals. Yet, despite having an obvious disadvantage while living in the world of dinosaurs, the Ogresuchus would still get the final laugh, as unlike the non-avian dinosaurs, it, or an unidentified relative, would go on to actually survive the impending asteroid impact. It's not currently known for certain how the Sebekids managed to avoid extinction during this event, but most speculate that the small size of early members played a large role as nearly no animal above 25 kilograms or 55 pounds survived the extinction event and fallout. Additionally, it's been suggested that like some crocodilians, the Sebekids had very slow metabolisms, meaning that even in a desolate world, they could manage to survive due to being able to get by on relatively small amounts of food. Whatever the case, the survival of the Sebekids proved pivotal, as they became the last lineage of the Sebekosuchians. On top of this, the lack of life following the impact and thus lack of competition resulted in them rapidly growing in size. And just 500,000 years later, they had already become the top predators in certain food chains, as demonstrated by the early Paleocene dated Zulma Sucus. This Sebekid resided in what is today Bolivia, and was roughly three times the size of the earlier Ogre Sucus. While this didn't make it a flat out giant, a three times size increase is quite remarkable when considering the timeline, and it also made the Zulmasuchus the largest predator in its environment, which was composed of fluvial and lacustrine habitats. Though, like other Sebekids, the Zulmasuchus remained fully terrestrial, 
and its tail was even round at the end, as opposed to the more tapered tails seen in modern crocs which is adapted for swimming. The Zulmasuchus would have preyed on a variety of animals, most of which were mammals or amphibians, which did not typically weigh over 1 kilo or 2.2 pounds, making them easy targets for this croc. And Bolivia wasn't the only area where subacids were thriving, as Argentina too saw these terrestrial carnivores rise through the ranks during the early Paleocene with the Lorosuchus, which was comparable in size to the Zulmasuchus. Its similar stature also meant it likely had similar prey, but this prey would not stay small for long, and neither would they, as during the late Paleocene, the Sebekids would see one of the biggest jumps in their sizes and range, with the arrival of the Sebekis. This Sebekid first emerged 59.4 million years ago, and was found in Bolivia, Argentina, Colombia, and possibly Brazil. It was an important newcomer as it was the first Sebekid to be considered a large carnivore, with adults measuring about 10 feet or 3.1 meters long, and weighing the same as a male spectacled bear. It lived in a habitat more diverse than the ones its earlier Paleocene predecessors did, and was joined by an array of notoungulates, meridiolestodons, xenarthens, metatherians, rodents, bats, and even primates. Many of these new animals were much bigger than before, and some, like the Astrapatherium, were likely even off the menu for Sebekis as adults. However, a fair share were still vulnerable. Plus, the Sebekis may have even been able to prey on animals much larger than it thanks to its extremely deep snout that allowed for more muscle attachment, specifically the muscles used to chomp downwards. This gave it a very efficient bite force which can also be seen in living crocodilians. But its method of killing was still unique, as unlike living crocs, which have rounded, widely spaced teeth that require consuming large pieces of food, the Sebekis possessed xiphodont teeth that were blade-like, making them well suited for slicing through meat. The teeth were actually remarkably similar to those seen in large theropods, and were actually most alike the teeth of tyrannosaurids, as both possessed serrated teeth with rounded protrusions called denticles, as well as sharp clefts. These clefts would essentially press the meat of victims between the serrations, slicing it apart like butter, incurring extreme trauma. This trait is seen in other Sebekids as well and made the Sebekis and its relatives a serious threat. But it may not have been as dominant as one would think, as it did have to compete with the terror birds, namely the medium-sized Andrusornis and Physornis. On top of this, scans of its brain case suggest it was rather primitive in intelligence, giving potential prey and competitors a small edge. However, don't be fooled, as the Sebekids would only get more dominant from here on out. Because, despite the Sebekis being a quote-unquote big level up for this family, it was still nothing compared to the members that would emerge during the golden era of the Sebekidae, which specifically took place during the Eocene. The middle stages of this epoch saw an increase in mammalian size, which in turn prompted the Sebekids to bulk up once more, and reached a maximum size with their largest member ever, the Barina Sucus. This titan was found throughout Venezuela, Argentina, and Peru, and it is the largest land predator to have lived since the dinosaurs, with adults being estimated to have weighed a staggering 1,720 kilos or 3,790 pounds, making it four times heavier than the average polar bear, the current largest terrestrial predator. The Barinasuchus was also exceptionally lengthy, with some believing it to have reached 10 meters or 33 feet. Though, more conservative estimates suggest that adults typically did not grow past 6.3 meters or 21 feet, which is still very impressive. Thanks to its extreme size, the Brinosuchus did not face any threats in its environment, and was by far the largest predator around. It is thought to have preyed upon a myriad of mammals, such as the notoungulates and glyptodonts, multiple of which, like the Xenostrapatherium, reached over one ton in weight. Even other carnivores in its environment were possibly under attack by this goliath, including a coexisting small sebekid, and possibly even terror birds. This creature was also freakishly fast for its size, thanks to its highly developed legs and light armor, that was composed of osteoderms running along the top of its head, back, and tail. 
Its deadly build was such an issue for others that it is believed to have been a key component in the lack of large mammalian predators in South America during the earlier stages of the Cenozoic. And the Brinosuchus wasn't the only nightmarish member of its family causing issues for mammals. As around the same time, the Sebekids had also successfully conquered Europe, so to speak. This time through the giant Dentaniosuchus. Other earlier Sebekids are known to have lived in Europe, demonstrated by the Iberosuchus and Ogrosuchus. Yet none were as dominant as this terror. Fossil dating shows that it first emerged about 1 million years after the oldest Burina Sucus, and resided in what is today France. Despite living at the same time, the Dentanio Sucus was not as closely related with the Burina Sucus as it was with other Sebekids. However, it was more similar to its South American counterpart when it came to size as it too was a giant. Adults are thought to have maybe reached 17.5 feet or 5.3 meters from head to tail. This did mean it was smaller than the Burina Sucus, but still makes it the largest terrestrial predator Cenozoic Europe has ever seen. And still, Dentanio Sucus rivaled the Burina Sucus in skull size as it proportionally had a larger skull, which may have actually been even larger in absolute terms as well. It also was armed with even more robust teeth than those seen in other Sebekids, which, along with its giant skull, allowed it to take down nearly every animal it lived with, including perissodactyls that weighed over two tons. It was possibly the only predator in its area that could tackle such prey, but it still had competition in the form of other crocodilians, large terrestrial birds, and hyenodonts. But unfortunately, its size advantage wouldn't help for long, as it vanished 37 million years ago, marking the end of the reign of Sebekids in Europe. Its demise in many ways also ushered in the rule of mammals on the continent, as it was one of the last large predators that was a reptile. The cause behind its downfall is unknown, but it is usually attributed to climate changes that had a larger impact on reptiles than mammals. However, the terror caused by this family was far from over as the South American members fared much better than the European Sebekids, demonstrated by the Brinosuchus, that had emerged earlier than the Dentaniosuchus but lasted for far, far longer, with its youngest fossils dating to just 11.8 million years ago, implying it had a reign of over 30 million years. This late extinction date also makes it the last known Sebekid along with the Langstonia, another South American member which vanished at the same time. It was smaller than the Burina Sucus, yet within its environment it was still considered the apex predator, as it outsized all coexisting terrestrial predators, including the somewhat large Spiracidons. But even with very little competition, the Langstonia like the Burina Sucus could not hold on to their rule forever, finally bringing the end of this terrifying group of crocodilomorphs. Their extinctions have long interested paleontologists as both seem to have been on the top of the world shortly before their abrupt extinctions, creating much debate. Currently, the leading conjecture is that at the time of their disappearance, the ancient system of large rivers within the Amazon had begun to break apart, leading to immense ecological changes in South America. These changes were exacerbated by the uplift of the Andes, and caused many lineages of hoofed animals to go extinct, essentially starving the Sebekids out. And with the Sebekids finally gone, the age of mammals was truly allowed to finally flourish. Yet not unchallenged, as the contemporary terror birds remained at large, and would do so for 11 million years after the last Sebekids. And if you're interested in learning more about these terrifying terror birds, then check out the video we made on them previously called The Time When Dinosaurs Rose Again. Link will also be in the description. And until next time on Extinct Zoo.